Welcome to the lecture 12 on the first module of the course titled Ocean Structures and Materials under the braces of NPTEL IIT Madras. Ladies and gentlemen, in module 1 we had a very brief outline of different topics to be consulted like for example, we discussed about different types of offshore structures, various structural systems deployed for shallow, medium and deep water and ultra deep waters, various environmental loads acting on offshore structures. We also discussed about the structural action exercised by offshore structures, different types of coastal structures, their geometric behavior, their cross sectional dimensions, functional applications and their construction materials. We all covered this module in the past 11 lectures. Today is a 12th lecture on module 1 on ocean structures and materials. In lecture 12, for the benefit of the readers, we will discuss about some tutorial sheets. I want you to answer these tutorial sheets in sincere manner. Look into the reference material suggested by me in the website as well as also cover up the lecture material as I discussed in the courses. Let us see the tutorial sheet number 1. We have discussed about brief history of offshore industry. So, I want you to recollect the information which we presented about the history of growth of offshore industry year wise and location wise. We also discussed something about GSPR. I want you to recollect this term. I want you to understand what do you mean by GSPR. Also let me know how is it significant to oil and gas exploration industry. Can you now list few fixed type of offshore platforms that are constructed worldwide? We have given a tabular column, we have identified the deepest fixed platform, the shallowest fixed platform, the total number of fixed type platforms constructed elsewhere in the world. Can you also explain? their structural action against or under the wave and wind action. What are name few offshore fields and approximately their year of installations? What are the important features of fixed offshore platforms as you understand from the lecture? Write a brief note on any one type of fixed offshore platform as you understand. Try to explain the complete constructional features, the operational features, the cost installation time, water depth and other technical details of any one fixed type offshore platform which we are discussing in the presentation. Let us talk about tutorial 2. The tutorial 2 will discuss about name few fixed offshore jacket platforms which has been constructed in the else part of the world. What do you understand by the term GBS? What are the key points of a gravity based structure? Draw a neat sketch of a gravity platform and explain salient components of this platform. Why steel skirts are being necessary for offshore foundation? We discussed about improving lateral stability of gravity based structures. We also discussed about some scouring problems related to large foundation requirements of gravity based structures, how they are overcome by means of steel skirt piles. Can you sketch? some common failures of gravity platforms. There are four types of failures which we identify in the first or second lecture. So, try to look into these notes and identify and elaborate some of the failure modes of gravity platforms. Can you also list important parts of a jack up rig? Ladies and gentlemen, try to recollect the name why a jack up rig name is suggested for this kind of a drilling rig. What do you understand by a spud can system of a foundation system of any offshore platform. What are the salient features of a compliant platform? Ladies and gentlemen, try to recollect the word the meaning of compliancy. So, we have already discussed classical platforms which are compliant in nature, which has got two distinct set of frequencies of structural vibrations, which make them enable to act as soft as well as flexible platforms as well under the given action of wave, winds and current. Draw a sketch of a guide tower and mark the vital components of a guide platform. After successfully answering tutorial 1 and 2, 
let us look into the questions on tutorial number 3. Tutorial number 3 wants you to write list salient features of articulated towers. We discussed about AT articulated towers, what are the vital components of an articulated tower, what is the structural action under which articulated tower encounter the environmental loads in a very successful manner. Draw a neat sketch of an articulated tower and mark the parts. Draw a neat sketch of a tension leg platform which is one of the most successful deep water installations in offshore industry. Mark the vital components of a tension leg platform. Also recollect the lecture explaining you why the platform is named as tension legs. How tension is imposed on these tendons when the platform is of so large volume and size being installed in the offshore site. While you understand the structural behavior of a tension leg platform, then you must be able to understand what do you mean by offset and set down of a TLP. Can you also discuss some of the salient advantages and disadvantages of a tension leg platform? Discuss also the salient features of semi submersibles. This is one of the kind of floating structure which we discussed in detail. So, also look at some of the salient features of semi submersibles. What is the typical water depth at which TLP can operate? If TLP has got to be constructed in shallow waters, what would be the demerit or structural disadvantage of a TLP in shallow waters? On the other hand, can you tell me why TLP are most suitable for deep waters? What is that structural advantage you gain by deploying TLP in a deep water? Name different types of spar platforms. We discussed different kinds of spar platform. We also showed you a literature where spar platforms are installed in various parts of the world. Their structural phenomena, their geometric shape and size, their approximate dimensions and their oil production capacity as well. So, name these platforms and try to explain at least one platform in detail. At what a depth similar to TLP, can you tell me also at what kind of water depth semi submersibles are feasible to operate? Why a semi submersible cannot operate in a different water depth other than recommended in the literature? Draw a free sketch of different platforms related to their installation of water depth. We have shown a very nice comprehensive picture for you where different kinds of offshore platforms are installed at the various water depths starting from shallow water to as deep as 2000 meters. After successfully answering tutorial number 1, 2 and 3, let us put tutorial 4 for the benefit of readers back again. In tutorial 4, I want you to explain what do you understand by the term FPSO, what do you understand by FSO and can you typically sketch an FPSO. To be very specific, I want you to draw a neat line diagram of one of the drilling platform by name Swift 10. This is available in the open source of literature. Look at this platform Swift 10, identify the salient features of this platform and mark the vital components of this platform by drawing a neat sketch of a drilling unit called Swift 10. Now, in FPSO, what do you understand by offloading? Why offloading is a very important element of an FPSO? What are the merits if you have a platform which has an offloading system as well? What do you understand by SWL? We discussed about this various levels of water depths depending upon the tidal variation and the astronomical tides etcetera. Can you recollect this and let me know what do you understand with the term SWL? Have you heard of drill ships? What do you understand by a term drill ship? How a drill ship is different from a conventional passenger vessel or a ship? Why it is called as a drill ship? When you talk about drill ships, try to understand what do you mean by moon pool facility in a drill ship. Also think about how drill ships are anchored in position by what we call dynamic positioning systems, what we in brief call DPS. Also list few offshore platforms meant for only exploration and not for production. Now, try to understand the difference between platforms that are meant for exploration and platforms that are meant for production and storage. Can you list some of the exclusive platforms 
which are constructed in offshore facility for exploration drilling only. What do you understand by exploration drilling? What are the different terminology in offshore drilling? We had an educated lecture on subsea drilling separately. So, look into these lectures and try to list down few offshore platforms meant for exploration drilling. So, ladies and gentlemen tutorials 1, 2, 3 and 4 will like to tell you a brief overview of different types of platforms, their functional aspects, their structural form and geometry, their structural action under the waves, wind and current etcetera in terms of their applicability for various water depths as we discussed in the previous lectures. So, after understanding tutorial 1, 2, 3 and 4, let us come to fifth tutorial which will talk about neat sketch on wave parameters, because we also discuss in one of the lecture module what are the different kinds of environmental loads that are acting on offshore structures. So, looking to that reference of two lectures on environmental loads 1 and 2, I want you to answer the following questions as a part of the fifth tutorial of module 1 of the course ocean structures and materials. Draw a neat sketch of wave parameters and mark the parameters and explain them. Write the equations for wave number, wave frequency and wavelength. I am asking very simple questions for you to answer, so that I want you to test whether can you recollect all this terminology easily from a lecture. How are waves classified according to water depth? What are the different kinds of wave theories available and are they applicable to different kinds of water depths? Can you write a very brief note on linear wave theory or what we call Aries wave theory. So, we explained in a lecture very detail how to estimate the water particle kinematics that is water particle velocity and acceleration in horizontal and vertical directions using Aries linear wave theory. I do not want you to write those expressions, remember those expressions because the expressions are available in the literature. I want you to write a very brief note on what do you understand by Aries wave theory, what are the assumptions made by this theory, why this theory has a limitation in application and what is the advantage of this theory when you want to do for preliminary analysis and design in offshore structures. Can you also talk about the significance of studies on marine growth in offshore structural engineering? What do you understand by a marine growth? How is it important? What is the significance of a marine growth in terms of design of members in offshore structures? Write down the expression to calculate the maximum wave force on a member. Remember ladies and gentlemen wave forces have different face values on different locations. So, we had an empirical expression approximately derived based upon a theta max and from that we derived f max on a member. So, I want you to write down that expression very clearly and also to calculate the main force for a given member. I also gave a tutorial earlier down the line in the lectures. I hope you have solved all those six problems which I asked you to solve in the previous tutorial. After sincerely attending tutorial 1 to 5, let us move to tutorial number 6. Tutorial number 6 is dedicated to different kinds of coastal structures. In general, where are coastal structures deployed? List primary objectives of different types of coastal structures that have been deployed in various parts of the world. What type of coastal structure is constructed to stabilize navigation channels in particular? Can you understand what is meant by sea dikes? Draw a neat sketch of a sea dike and name the vital components of a sea dike. Discuss various structural forms of a sea dike and the materials used for construction of a sea dike. Also draw a neat sketch of grass armored and rebel armored sea dikes and mark its vital parts. Specify appropriate dimensions of the cross section of a sea dike. Let us talk about tutorial number 7. Tutorial number 7 will be focusing on again structures related to coastal protection. Can you tell me what are sea walls? What do you understand by sea walls? List their functional characteristics. How instability of sea walls under severe score is addressed in the design and construction? Ladies and gentlemen, discuss back again the construction aspects of a sea wall. We talked about reinforcing the toe wall in a sea wall inward slope and we also said why toe wall should be protected and why is covering should not be there on the sea wall layers. How sea walls are actually classified? 
or they classified based upon the depth of construction or they classified based upon the material or they classified based upon the type and shape of geometry. Please let me know how are you classifying sea walls from the literature. Can you tell me what do you understand by revetments? Are revetments similar to soil retaining structures? List primary functions of revetment which is being used one of the protection for coastal structures. Draw a neat sketch of cross section of a revetment and mark the vital parts of the revetment. What are bulkheads in your understanding? Draw a neat cross section of a bulkhead and explain the shore protection mechanism that is offered by a bulkhead. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last tutorial sheet we have for module number 1. What are groins? Have you heard of this name groins? List few structural and hydromorphological problems associated with groins. Groins are actually coastal protection structures which are constructed perpendicular to the shoreline. There can be many shapes of groins as well. So, what are groins? How are they constructed? What are the material being used? What are the appropriate dimensions of a groin? What is the structural form being recommended in the literature for groins? Can you explain the functional design of a breakwater? The moment we hear the term breakwater, we discuss many types of breakwater starting from bottom fixer type, floating type, reef breakwaters, etcetera. So, can you tell me how functional design of breakwaters are done in the literature? Can you list different types of breakwaters? If so, can you draw a neat sketch of all of them and explain the difference in the structural form and their actions? What are special applications of reef breakwaters? If a breakwater is submerged, what are those hazardous things which will happen to a swimmer and boats? Discuss merits and demerits of a submerged sills. What are submerged sills? What are functional importance of a jetty? What do you understand by one of the coastal protection structure which we call as jetties? What are the different shapes of jetties? How are they constructed? What is the geometric form? What is the structural function of a jetty? What are the functional importance of construction of jetty? Can you draw a neat cross section of a jetty and explain the structural action of jetty under waves, wind and current? Ladies and gentlemen, this module covering with 12 lectures will be able to complete a brief introduction on different kinds of ocean and coastal structures that are deployed in various parts of the world. I am sure that you will attempt all these tutorials sincerely. Whatever doubts and questions you have, you want you can easily communicate to me in an email at drsekaran at iatm.ac.in. Thank you very much. We look forward for you to listen to module 2.